A dangerous storm system is forming as we head into the weekend ahead, and this could bring the worst severe weather outbreak of 2024 so far from parts of the Central Plains to the Midwest and Ohio Valley. In this video, I've got the details on the day-by-day -day impacts going all the way through Monday and Tuesday of next week towards the East Coast. Breakdown of everything you need on the pattern ahead right here. As always, thank you so much for being here with me at One Nation Weather. I use Weatherbell model maps in my videos, so don't forget to check out their free trial link right down there in the description. Also, if you're new to my channel here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button after watching this video if you enjoy it and want more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts in the days and weeks and months and years to come here. So let's get right into this here. Looking at the future radar from the European model as we head through our Saturday, May 25th of 2024. Before we get severe weather back towards the west, we've still got a lingering system we're going to be watching with shower and thunderstorm coverage over the Ohio Valley, parts of the Tennessee Valley, as well as the southeastern United States throughout the afternoon, heading into the early evening. A lot of these are just garden variety thunderstorms with some maybe briefly gusty winds and small hail in addition to the rain and lightning. We will possibly see, though, a few isolated severe storms, particularly up there in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York, and then down in Alabama and Georgia, where there will be the potential for some isolated damaging winds and larger hail around an inch to two inches in diameter. Now, back here in this new area I'm circling here as we head towards the late Saturday, going into early Sunday, May 20. Sixth. This is where we're going to be particularly watching the potential for a dangerous tornado and severe weather outbreak to get going. Now, this model doesn't even show precipitation here in parts of Oklahoma and Texas, but with the environment that I'm going to show you in just a minute that's going to get going here over these areas as we head towards the late Saturday, early Sunday time frame, it is looking likely that we will see some isolated supercells and eventually some line segments of storms forming through these areas, as well as on over in the zones you do see pictured of Kansas and Missouri with the rainfall there. That could be particularly severe, and again, will watch the tornado potential not only there, but with some of these storms as they progress east towards parts of Wisconsin and especially Illinois and Indiana as we head towards the Sunday, May 26th of 2024 time frame. That will be round one. We'll probably see multiple rounds of not only tornado potential, but especially damaging wind and hail potential over parts of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Tennessee Valley. The mid-Mississippi Valley will also be impacted by some of these storms I'm circling here as we head towards the late Sunday, early Monday, May 27th time frame here. You can see from parts of Arkansas and Missouri through southern Illinois and central Illinois as well. Well, central and southern Indiana, all the way in over there to Ohio, parts of West Virginia, and down through Kentucky and Tennessee. This is where this particular model is picking up on middle-of-the-night storms here as we go late Sunday heading into early Monday. And again, some of these will be capable, especially there as you get towards the Ohio River and southern Indiana and parts of Kentucky. Some damaging winds, hail, and even some tornadoes here. So we'll be definitely watching that even as we head towards late Monday afternoon from parts of New York, Pennsylvania, down through the mid-Atlantic states and towards the southeast coast even of the United States. We will still have to try some of these showers and storms for at least isolated scattered coverage of stronger to even potent severe storms. We will at least have probably some isolated tornado potential on Monday. By the time we go towards late Monday, heading into early Tuesday, May 28th, this system will be wrapping up. Even though it's still strengthening over southeastern Canada, it will be wrapping up for most areas of the country, although some late night storms Monday going into early Tuesday will be possible over parts of the northeast in New England. The system finally wraps up for all areas on land overall as we head towards Tuesday, May 28th during the late day time frame, although we will still see a lingering boundary and some storms in parts of the South Central Plains, maybe even on up there in the Ohio Valley as you just saw on your screen during that time frame. Nothing looking quite as extreme as what we're going to be seeing this weekend though. And here's what's bringing everything this weekend. It's always good to look at that mid-level jet stream 15 to 20,000 feet up in the atmosphere to see what's going on. And you can see this short wave trough ejecting on out of the southwestern United States, heading into the South Central Plains as we head towards Saturday, May 25th. This is going to fuel that tornado threat over particularly northern Kansas, heading into Oklahoma, as well as some surrounding areas there in Missouri, northwest Arkansas, maybe even in southern Nebraska and southern Iowa. And again, you can really see the nature of this trough really pushing strongly and pretty quickly here out of the western end of the central United States. There's that little max wind speed there around 75 to 80 knots in parts of Texas and Oklahoma. That's going to kind of coincide with some other ingredients here to make this not only a potent storm closer to the surface, but as well as in the mid and upper levels here, which is exactly what we're looking at. Continuing into Sunday, May 26th, remember the severe weather potential looks most elevated from my eyes and from the Storm Prediction Center's eyes over parts of Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, surrounding zones there, and look exactly where that mid-level jet streak continues with some 60 to 65 knot readings, according to this model, heading right on over those areas and really just running behind those areas, which is exactly what you normally look for with troughs. With severe weather setups, that's exactly the kind of setup you're looking for. And even as we head towards Monday here, overlapping with a lot of our other ingredients, 
over parts of the mid-Atlantic. We'll have that system moving on through, so we'll have to watch here in the east coast of the United States. We're going to still be watching at least a mildly potent trough um, that could support some east coast severe weather on Monday. Now, my own W severe scale, if you're new to my channel, this is what it looks like. It goes from 1 to 7, 1 to 2 being isolated severe weather possible, 3 to 4 overview being around increased to scattered for severe weather coverage. Some storm significant. Five and six is when you're getting into outbreak territory, and seven, I've never used that before, but that is an extreme tornado outbreak. And we're getting up to a five, and I even considered a six there in that dashed um, maroonish shade there in parts of Kansas and Oklahoma for our Saturday, May 25th of 2024. If you want to look at Sunday's threats more in depth, skip to around the 10-minute mark in this video. But for now, let's look at this here with a possibly catastrophic severe weather event likely for especially Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri late Saturday. It's an untouched atmosphere where we'll have plenty of daytime heating. We'll fire up severe storms. All hazards of severe weather do appear likely here, including the potential for some destructive tornadoes on that EF0 to EF5 scale, some of them getting on up there at least to EF3 caliber. Very large hail, some to 5 inches in diameter, well over that softball and baseball size range, and even some intense wind gusts, some over 80 to 90 miles per hour. So let's look at some of those other ingredients, not just the broad ones we looked at a minute ago. Here we go with dew points. This is your moisture content. Whenever you're in the yellows getting into the 50s, you're getting modest moisture. 60s and 70s, the higher you go through those, numbers. That's even better moisture for severe weather. And look at this. This is as we head towards 4, 5, 6 o'clock on our Saturday. 60s, even some low to mid 70s pushing through Texas, Oklahoma, parts of Arkansas ahead of this boundary here. This is a dry line moving through right around that Oklahoma, Texas panhandle region. Notice those dew points are in the single digits and teens, meaning drier is on the western side of those states, as well as in western Kansas as well. And then on the east side of that boundary, we've got the 60s and 70s for dew points. This is a classic Cold on the west, warm and moist on the east, severe weather setup here for the South Central Plains. And as this boundary continues to move kind of towards the east-northeast as we go throughout the evening of our Saturday, this is as we go towards the early Sunday time frame around the middle of the night. Look at these dew points, still in the 60s, still in the 70s over a lot of this area. No reason to think that we don't have enough moisture to support severe weather. In fact, the moisture is overachieving according to this model and others as well. And in fact, what's also likely to overachieve is this, your low level jet stream. And this is around, you know, just several thousand feet above the surface, not 15 to 20,000 like we were looking at with that mid to upper level jet earlier. In this area I just circled here where we've got those 60, 70, even 80 knot low level jet stream winds. I haven't even really, since the start of my channel, like a year, year and a half ago, especially when we've been breaking down severe weather setups, I haven't touched many 70 to 80 low-level jet stream winds for knots there. So that is crazy to see. Tornado parameter here on the HRRR model, it combines a bunch of different ingredients and kind of gives you an output on a scale of normally 0 to 10 to show you where severe weather and tornado potential is elevated if you get storms to form in these areas at least. As we head towards the end of the evening here, late Saturday, May 25th, heading into early Sunday, May 26th, southern Kansas, south central Kansas at that especially, heading into most of Oklahoma and parts of the non-panhandle regions, let's just say that, and then north central Texas. I mean, we've got 15 to 20 to 25 on a graphic that normally only goes up to 10 here. This is a model. This is not me trying to overhype anything. This is a weather model that rarely shows anything above 10 because that's basically above the top level that you get on these types of parameter graphics. If it's showing this, we need to be really concerned, even as we head into parts of Missouri and Arkansas late tomorrow evening here. So this is as we had late Saturday, heading into early Sunday. Again, I'll rehash that. Let's look at some timing here using the HRRR model. Is this going to be exactly correct? No. Will it give us a good idea of what to look at? Yes. We could already have some storms by 4, 5, 6 o'clock here in the western parts of this risk area. Some of those with tornado, wind, and hail potential. Uh, look at what we're getting here according to this model anyway and this will shift many times by the time we get to this event even though it's only 24 hours away from when i filmed this video oklahoma city surrounding areas there in northern oklahoma you could also have the same pocket of cells trying to develop more widespread in parts of kansas even down to northern texas here this type of cell cluster right here that you could have multiple strong tornadoes within that cluster of supercells some baseball to even at four to five inch diameter hail and you could even have some very damaging winds on the outflow boundaries of these storms which is just where you've got some of those gusty wind fronts there moving on through eastern kansas northeastern oklahoma in the middle of the night some supercells still possible all the way up there to parts of southern nebraska uh, even central and eastern nebraska will be watching some of these storms that'll produce probably mostly damaging winds and hail those gusts some of them maybe 60 to 70 miles per hour some of the hail one to two inches in diameter in isolated fashion we could even see a tornado or two up there and then notice how everything kind of converges overall in this area as we head towards around one two three o'clock again this is according to this particular model northeast kansas western missouri southwest iowa and southeastern parts 
of Nebraska. That's where it's looking from Lincoln, Nebraska, down to Springfield, Missouri, like we'll see, especially damaging winds really ramping on up as the night goes on, especially if we get more of these clusters to turn into a mesoscale convective complex of storms, which is just where you've got the damaging winds getting elevated. More storms will continue towards Missouri and Illinois towards Sunday. Yeah, let's break down Sunday here now on my own W severe scale, which goes from 0 to 7, 1 being the first risk level for severe weather. Another wave of intense storms appears likely Sunday with damaging winds possibly leading the way, and I'll show you that in a second here. Some gusts possibly well over 75 miles per hour. That could even be numerous here if we get the kind of setup I'm looking at right now. I think it's also important to note that any initializing or continuing storms with that supercell or even line segment structure, especially when you get a QLCS or quasi-linear convective system, that's just where you've got kind of the rotation in embedded cells within your gusty wind line of storms. So that's even more dangerous here. You've got the winds, hail, and tornadoes really all in one line there. Those will be the ones that will be capable of, of the tornado potential, those types of cells, so the supercells, and especially if we get those QLCS lines, that's where we'll get the tornado potential here in this very moisture-rich environment here as we head towards Sunday. If you missed my Saturday discussion, dew points just show you the moisture content in 60s and 70s. T let me tell you, this is plenty of moisture for severe weather. I mean, we've even got a 75-degree dew point there in central Missouri. This is where if we weren't getting severe weather and you weren't worried about that and you had to be outside in the hot summer heat, you would definitely be feeling that mugginess and would not want to be outside. You'd be sweating almost instantly in this kind of moisture. That continues sinking southeastward as the evening goes on according to that NAM model. Looking at the NAM model again here for low-level jet winds, this is a pretty reliable model, especially for this type of, you know, playthrough. And as we head towards the middle of Sunday night, heading into early Monday here, we've got this maxing out of some of these jet winds around 50 to 60 knots in the low levels here. So again, that's kind of coming out of the south, combining with some of those westerlies that we looked at in that mid to upper level jet stream, and that's going to help to support more severe weather here over this area. The area, by the way, on any of these graphics that I'm showing you with future radar is where you're looking at the official Storm Prediction Center risk outlines, which go from level 0 to all the way to level 5. One is in that greenish shade. Yellow is that kind of level 2. Then level 3 is in that orange. We'll see if we have any lingering storms that could progress eastward into parts of the Ohio Ohio Valley throughout the morning and even towards the midday time frame of our Sunday from the previous night here, but it's looking like most storms aren't going to fire up until later in the day, especially the ones we're going to be watching, especially at least according to this NAM model. Things will change a million times, not literally, but figuratively by the time we head towards Sunday here. But I think this is kind of what we're looking at, and I'm seeing this on the European model's lightning tracker as well. Through central Illinois here, some of these storms forming multiple line segments by the time we head towards the late Sunday, early Monday time frame. This is 9 to 10 p.m. here on our Sunday evening. From eastern Missouri, through this orange area and parts of Illinois, all, of, all the way over there into central in Indiana, there where the biggest line, according to this model, will be. We're going to be watching these localized to even more numerous clusters of those 70, 80, maybe even 90 mile per hour wind gusts with a damaging wind setup like this. Do I see tornadoes occurring in a setup like this? Yes. Do I see it? being as widespread as we would see with that kind of more isolated and supercellular mode back towards the plane Saturday. No. Notice in this area I circled here as we head towards the middle of the night and into the early part of Monday morning here. We'll be watching continuing storms in Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky again. According to that model, things will change. Here we go towards Monday. Here's my severe zones to watch. If you're in the yellow on this map, I'm expecting at least some isolated severe weather looking likely. I think it's set in stone at this point that isolated severe weather will be likely in most of these yellow zones come Monday. By the time we head towards Monday afternoon and evening, scattered severe weather will likely ramp up over parts of the mid-Atlantic Delmarva region. So keep that in mind if you live there, especially the closer you are to the East Coast. Late Monday heading into early Tuesday, we'll watch the storms there. Then during the afternoon Tuesday, new storms could fire up over parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. There will be probably an isolated severe weather risk there from that. Let's look at day-by-day -day temperatures here. Here we go into the weekend south of this line, looking at a lot of 80s here for our Saturday, May 25th of 2024, but we're looking at a lot of much warmer areas south of this line here that I just hashed out, a lot of 90s south of the line. Down there closer to the Rio Grande there in south Texas on the Mexico border, we've got 100 plus degree readings there, and in a lot of the zones where the severe weather and that moisture, you know, the moisture content's going to be lifting northward. We're going to be certainly looking at plenty of 80s and 90s to go around. Now let's look at the high temperatures here as we head towards Sunday. In our severe weather risk zone from Missouri to southern Illinois and southern Indiana, surrounding areas, plenty of upper 80s, even some low 90s, especially if we get the daytime heating to filter into these areas. You know, the less storms there are during the early part of the day, the more heat, the more instability gets going for those later day storms. So that's something we'll have to track in addition to those 90s that I just circled further south. Now here we go towards Monday. We begin to see the heat shifting southward a little bit. Still enough 70s and 80s to support that severe weather in the mid-Atlantic I was telling you about. 
And we've got plenty of warmth across other areas as well. Look at this, though. Further north you go, it's actually kind of cool and dry up here. The Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, looking at mid-60s to upper 60s and low 70s for highs there Monday. That really continues over a lot of this zone as we head towards Tuesday, and some of that will sink southward into parts of the Great Lakes region as well. Here we go down here over the South Central United States, keeping it warmer. So through the Carolinas, Virginia, all the way in over there to South Texas and the South Central Plains, still some 80s and 90s for highs. Find your location on the map, as always, here day by day as well. That was for Tuesday. Going into Wednesday, more cool, dry weather. A lot of 60s and 70s over the northeastern quadrant of the United States. Even down here in Tennessee, North Carolina, some 70s pushing on southward. Missouri, some 70s, more 80s and 90s elsewhere, though, the closer you go to the Gulf Coast, as well as in the high plains. And that's kind of the pattern we're looking at in the 6 to 10 day range. Closing out May, heading into the first few days of June here. Climb Prediction Center hashing out an area for cooler than average air, closer to the east coast. A little bit warmer than average in the central United States, though, according to this graph but no huge temperature anomalies looking like they're going to be likely in that 6 to 10 day range from when I filmed this. Um, in terms of pre precipitation anomalies, looking a little drier than average in the east, so a break from severe weather there more than likely behind this front. Obviously no severe weather in the west where it'll be dry. Maybe the central United States though, and especially the high plains lighting up with some storms. If you want to stay with me for any updates I provide through Saturday through Sunday with anything in severe weather in the future, subscribe to the channel. Stay safe out there. That's it for this video.